Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to see the Infosys test interview questions asked for an automation engineer. So let me open that slide. Yeah. Okay. So we are going to see the Infosys automation test engineer questions. So there will be two technical rounds, basically, if you are going for an Infosys interview. In the very first round that is called as L1 round, the questions will be asked on Selenium core Java API testing. And in the second round, they might ask you the questions on projects, OOPS concepts, how you have implemented those OOPS concepts in the projects, right? Like they might ask you, how will you implement inheritance? How have you implemented abstraction? Or can you show your code? So it's a virtual interview. So most probably you can share your screen and you can showcase your code, how you have implemented polymorphism, abstraction, and all those OOPS concepts in the Selenium automation framework. Okay. Then how will you validate a particular API? So let's say if there are various methods like post, what, what is the actual method of that API? So if it's in post, so of, after, after posting those things, so what value you are getting? Are you getting 200 okay response or not? Or are you getting 401, 404 response? The different error codes. So these kind of questions will be asked in the second round. Okay, so roles and responsibility and explain about your project, this was common. Now let's see the Selenium kind of questions that can be asked. Now, how will you confirm which user is logged in? Okay, so they might give you some web application so let's take an any web application, like let's say if it's an e-commerce website, amazon.com or flipkart.com. So generally we see at the right side of the top of the page, you can see the profile over there or you can see the name over there. So you can automate it by using get text method over there. And you can fetch the name of the profile and you can compare it using assertion. And that's how you have to answer over there as well. So it depends in, in most of the applications it is top right for example now you can see in this uh, presentation also it is top right so similarly you can explain okay and you can use get text method over there and you can retrieve the name of the profile from there next is what is the difference between implicit weight and explicit weight now this is one of the difference Another difference that is most commonly asked is find element and find elements. So this we have seen in the last video when we have shown you the testing interview questions asked at Oracle company, right? So this question is common. It was asked in Infosys as well, and it is asked in Oracle as well. Now difference between implicit and explicit weight. So basically implicit weight is used to tell the web driver to wait for a certain amount of time before it throws no such element exception. Okay, and for explicit weight, it will tell that web driver to wait for expected conditions before throwing element not visible exception. Okay, so there is a difference between no such element exception and element is not visible. And the default setting for implicit weight is zero. And once we set this time, the web driver will wait for that particular, for the element for that time before throwing an exception. While explicit weight is in kind of intelligent weight and it can, but it can be only applied for specified elements and it gives you the better options comparatively. And it can also be used for various websites in which Ajax elements are being implemented. So they load dynamically. And the syntax for implicit weight is driver.manage.timeouts.implicit weight. Okay. While in case of explicit weight, the syntax would be in this context. Okay, so moving to the next question. What are data providers in test ng? Okay, so as you very well know, you need to explain those things. Data provider in the test ng are used to pass the parameters in the test function. Now they might ask you to write a simple kind of, uh, you know, one method or one function as well. So you can uh, see this is a syntax basically for data provider, okay. And it they'll ask you what kind of uh, objects it is returning. So it returns a 2D list of objects. And this also might be asked, 
So if the tester has not specified the name of the data provider, then the method name becomes the data provider name by default. Okay, so, so the data provider question can also be asked. And okay, now what are asserts in Selenium? What is the difference between assert and verify? Or so this was the interview question asked to one of my subscriber, but at the same time, they can also ask you what is the difference between hard assertion and soft assertion. Okay, so now assert in Selenium is used for verifying or validating the scenario under test based on the result of the assert the outcome that is pass or fail of the test can be decided. So these are few of the commonly used assertions like assert equals, assert not equals, assert boolean is also there, true and false you can determine, none is there, null and not null, identical is there, assert same, assert not same. Okay. So let's, uh, you can also take an example in an interview when you are explaining to them. So a simple example of an assert can be opening the web page under test and you are matching the page title with the expected title and you are verifying if the required web elements on the page are loaded or not. So in case if the page URL is incorrect or a window title is or the page title is incorrect, if it does not matches with the expected thing, then the search will be through and the, since the test scenarios will definitely fail. So assertions are nothing but a kind of checkpoints over here. You can explain. Okay. Then what is J unit? What is the difference between J unit and test ng? Okay. Then you can also be asked, how do you handle exception? So how do you handle exception? So basically we have try catch. That is one of the simplest method of handling exceptions. Whichever code you feel is can give you an exception at the time of execution of the automation. So that particular code you can keep in the try block. Okay. And any exceptions that the code throws are caught by one by one in the catch blocks. So method will catch any kind of Java exceptions that get thrown. So thrown. So this is the mechanism for handling exceptions. Okay. Apart from this, one more question that uh, I forgot to put in, in the slide was, let's say if there are three checkboxes in the web page, how will you make sure that when you click or when you perform action, it pro it clicks on the second checkbox only. So this was, there was the website that was given for automation interview. And uh, there were three checkboxes and my subscriber was asked to click on the second checkbox only. So one has to be very much clear with the XPath and over there you can go, you can get the number of elements checkboxes over there and you can run the for loop. And if the counter is two or if the counter is like in the second checkbox, so you have to perform the click else terminate that particular code or end that block. So basically this is how you can explain those kind of interview questions if they are asked. Many times they might ask you to, you know, help them with the finding expo, then give them the method or give them, explain them the logic. So you can share the screen and you can write the logic before them. And then you can explain, or you can parallel do that task, write And explain to them simultaneously. Okay. So you can take your time apart from this. Uh, we have got various interview questions from various companies. So if you are also giving the interview, so please share the interview questions with us at rdautomationlearning at gmail.com. We will create the videos on the recent uh, interview questions asked in various MNC companies and we will be sharing with the community. Thank you for watching this video and thank you for your time.